Yeah, well, I'm really excited to uh, and have been working hard on preparing lectures for uh, Life Focus this year. Uh, the theme is Living for God's Glory, What Animates Calvinism. And my assignment is to give the first lectures uh, each, uh, each day at the beginning of the week. And so I'm really trying to lay the groundwork of our theme that then is being developed by several of our other teachers as well. And so I'll be focusing on the foundational truth that, uh, that God, it's the glory of God that is, that is what animates Calvinism and trying to demonstrate to students how they can think deeply and biblically about the matter of God's glory. My observation is that oftentimes people use the word glory and they haven't really thought through. They don't have a clear concept of what they mean by glory. I like to use the illustration of the sun, that, the, that God has what we call in theology intrinsic glory. Glory shines out of him. The gl glory is, his character is glorious. And yet, because his, the light of his glory is shining upon the creation, the creation is designed to respond to God's intrinsic glory with praise and thanksgiving and worship. And this is the second kind of glory that we call ascribed glory. So God promises that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And the result of that is that more and more and more people will become worshipers, will be, will be those who shout their praises to the King of Kings. And so my goal in, these, uh, in this first set of lectures is to draw people into that uh, deep consideration. And then in the second set of lectures this week, uh, I'm wanting to uh, take the students through a fairly traditional uh, uh, survey of the five doctrines of grace, uh, uh, nicknamed Calvinism. Uh, and I'd, I'm hoping that uh, the, ch the students can be, in some cases, introduced, in some cases, drawn into a deeper understanding of what these five points entail and how they really are distinctives of the Reformed faith. And so uh, I hope that students can uh, better understand, I like to say, the God who does stuff. We don't, we don't choose God. God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. We don't get ourselves included in the atonement. From the beginning, the atonement has always been a definite atonement. Jesus actually died on the cross in the place of a finite group of people we call the elect. And then the Holy Spirit comes and he applies that redemption to us in part by giving us a new heart. We call it the doctrine of regeneration. And uh, so I like those three middle parts, the U, the L, and the I, because they really summarize the trying work of God in bringing about the salvation of his people.